So we know that when we want to send the call to load, so we're actually going to get a tiny WebDB component, get value, and we're going to plug that into the list picker. And we're going to say, when the list picker has been uh, picked, when they pick a note from the note titles variable list, then we're going to send that selection to the web and say, return whatever stored under that tag. And then we have to wait for that to come. And while we're waiting for that to come, we set the title box text to that title that was selected in the list picker selection. Um, and uh, then whatever was either last in the note box text or perhaps nothing that will appear to the user that there'll be nothing in the note box text because we immediately set the list picker selection title in the title box, but nothing is going to load into that note field, that note box, until the data actually gets in and we process it. So we're actually going to just place in uh, the note box text a little um, hang on for a minute text uh, to users. So we're going to take a text box and we're going to say, uh, please wait, loading note. And if you guys build this, you'll see that this works very nicely. Um, that the title gets placed in the list picker, or rather in the title box, and then uh, in the note box it says, hey, now please wait, wait while loading the note. And then the second that the data gets in, this got value here then gets triggered, and um, the got value allows us then to repopulate that um, note box with whatever the data was that was in the note. Okay, so we have to retrieve one more set of data before we're ready to process that data as it comes back. Remember, we were using the screen one initialize to populate the uh, list, add items uh, to list with, to the note titles. So we know that when the app first starts, we need to get the list of notes from the WebDB and place that in the note titles list. So we're going to use the uh, tiny WebDB get value, and we'll say we're going to retrieve what? Well, we stored those note titles under this tag here, just a text tag called note titles. So we're going to say get that there. Now, um, we can't add it here, because remember, we have to wait for that data uh, to come in. So that's all we're going to do there is we're going to tell the application to send a get for those note titles. Um, we're going to have to do this, add that, um, add that stuff to note titles um, inside this got value trigger, as well as then set that, uh, the list picker elements to the note titles. But remember, at this point, we've got two requests out there. A request for um, the list picker selection, and we've got a uh, request for note titles. So we need to set some logic up that says whether the incoming um, information from the tiny WebDB service um, is from um, either call, it has to be placed in the appropriate place. So we need to do an if statement. So we're going to grab an if block. We're just going to grab two of them because we have two possible tests. We need to test if the information coming in is tagged with uh, the list picker selection or if it's tagged with um, note titles. And that's what exactly we're going to test for. We're going to say um, if the um, this is a very tricky place right here. When I was first using Tiny WebDB, I kept grabbing and copying this name of this uh, parameter, this argument here. And you don't want to grab the name. You actually want to go to My Definitions, because when you drag out a got value, you get two new definitions. You get the value of the tag from the WebDB and a value uh, from the WebDB. You could change this to whatever you wanted. You could call this uh, incoming. tag. 
if you will. Then when you go to my definitions, you'll get an argument called incoming tag. Yeah, if we spell correctly. And we could change this to incoming data. Doesn't matter. But those are actually defined then over here, values over here. So we're going to test that incoming tag. If the incoming tag is equal to, well, if it's equal to um, note titles, we know exactly what we want to do to it. We want to take uh, the data that was attached to that, which was um, um, all of these, uh, all of this, uh, uh, this list in the in the uh, note titles. So we're going to grab this and place it right in here. We're going to say to add the items to the list, note titles. Well, what items? Well, it's going to be the incoming data that's attached to that list. So we're going to go to my definitions and grab that incoming data. So now, if the incoming tag is equal to note titles, then um, uh, place the items to in the list note titles um, and make that uh, the incoming data in note titles. And then, of course, we want to place the list picker elements as uh, the note titles. If, however, that incoming tag is equal to this list picker selection, because remember, um, when we selected a particular note, we sent out a request to the web to return um, the note box text that was attached to that title. So if the incoming tag is equal to whatever the current list picker selection is, then we want to do something totally different. What we want to do is we want to set the note box text to, you guessed it, the incoming data. So, when data comes in, it triggers the dot value. And we've got two tests. If the incoming value of the tag is equal to note titles, we know we want to place all that list in the note titles list. But if the incoming tag is equal to our list picker selection, we know it's data coming in um, that's equal to our uh, text from the note box, so we want to place that in the note box. So at this point, we're pretty darn close to the exact same functionality we have with TinyDB, but with the TinyWebDB. So we packaged up the application, put it on the emulator here. Let's see if it works. There's our TinyWebDB node. It appears to work, so let's put in some text. We're going to put in... Test one and note text, and we're going to save that note. And then let's put another one in. Test two and more text. Save that note. Now we want to get back our first note. So we click load note. Yeah. Definitely got a bug here. Um, I'm too tired to go back and see what we did wrong. I got this once before. This could be because we we're using that public web database and I was testing earlier. Because uh, those are all titles that I used previously testing. I'm not real sure, but let's try to load test one. Yeah. You saw briefly flash up there our please, uh, um, please wait loading note. Um, on my actual Droid 1 across 3G, that's up there for about three quarters of a second. So it's up there enough time uh, to make it necessary. On the emulator, it's just barely there before uh, the data comes in across my bat broadband connection. Everything uh, loads in. So we got uh, that. So let's try to load our uh, test 2 note and more text. So everything works. So at this point, we have persistent data stored on a tiny web DB using much the same uh, methodology that we used previously. It's just now we're using the tiny WebDB and we had to uh, request the data and then process it once it came back from the web service. You guys, there are a lot of things you could do from here using those principles. Uh, maybe our next tutorial will be on how to create your own tiny WebDB uh, service. 
customized for you. You guys have fun and good luck making apps.